How's everybody doing tonight? Today, tonight, wherever it is, whatever time. How are you? Welcome. Hopefully you guys enjoyed your holiday break. Hopefully you're enjoying your new year. And we'll get it going from here. So, we got four stories. We're going to track the sales of mushroom through 2020 to see if there's anything that affected the sales of 2020 for mushrooms to see if it had any impact. We'll check that out. And we'll uh, check out some arsenic speciation. And we'll look into some yeast. And we're going to check out and wrap up with a pretty nice little mushroom suit slash casket that's pretty cool so first things first is yes, we are going to get into our press releases now these come from the american mushroom.org and this will really show us what's happened throughout the year of 2020 so we'll start off with their first press release which was on january 15 2020 and it started off saying mushroom growers are entertaining 2020 with record sale volumes increasing retail prices and solid demand for fresh mushrooms according to the american mushroom institute the september shipment report from the mushroom council shows domestic mushroom production set a new all-time high this was the fourth consecutive new monthly high and reflects steady sales growth throughout the summer months but june and august volumes exceeded 80 million pounds for the first time ever now granted we got to remember they're talking about 2019 summer this is January of 2020. And then we'll skip forward to good old May 8th of 2020. Some retailers are facing a shortage of mushroom as many growers in the U.S. continue to experience the impacts of Yeah, that guy. Unlike other continually fruiting produce, mushrooms grow in a 6 to 12 week cycle. This includes a period for producing compost for the planting beds in a period of 2 to 3 growth cycles that support a maximum of 3 harvests. After those harvests, beds are emptied and refilled with another batch of carefully produced compost to begin the growth cycle again. The conditions, they really messed it up this year. Yeah. They were trying to adapt their cycles, but yeah, it, it just didn't. It's, it was unfortunate. And then we'll skip forward to good old September 1st, 2020. Value to sales for the 2019 to 2020 mushroom crop was 1.15 billion, up 3% from the previous season. The average reported price was 1.4 uh, was 141 per pound up seven cents from the previous year. United States fresh market sales from the agaricus mushroom seven, totaled 741 million pounds, down 1% from the previous season, while processed sales at 55.6 million pounds decreased 14% from the previous season. Agaricus mushroom volume of the sales totaled 796 million pounds, down 2% from the 2018 to 2019 season, which tells you that it was affected. No matter how you want to look at it, it was affected. That guy right there. Alright, so that was just a nice little wrap up to see how uh, everything was affected this year. Um, that thing behind me absolutely took down a lot of things. Uh, and absolutely affected the mushroom industry. Just like everything else does. So we're going to scoot on over here to our next article. And this article comes from fizz.org. Review of arsenic speciation in mushrooms from China. Arsenic is a natural environmental contaminant to which humans are usually exposed in water, air, soil, and food. China is a typical high arsenic region and also a great contributor of the world production of cultivated edible mushrooms in the region abundant in wild growing edible mushrooms. Mushrooms can accumulate different amounts of arsenic in different arsenic compounds. Many studies on arsenic and mushrooms from China have been published in Chinese partly because of the language barriers. They are not fully accessible for those who do not read Chinese. The researchers performed a systematic literature search in the Web of Science and Google Scholar using combinations of keywords including arsenic, fungi, mushroom, fruiting body, spore, cap, metalloid, China. 
Similar searching strategy was also carried out in the CNKI in Chinese. They also checked cited reference in the identified literature to find more relevant studies. They found that in China arsenic in cultivated mushrooms is lower than in wild grown mushrooms in general. Health risk assessments of arsenic and mushrooms have been carried out in numerous studies. Mushrooms possessing elevated arsenic contents belong to several fungal families. For some mushroom species, both the intraspecific and interspecific variation in arsenic forms can be large. We propose future studies to be done on developing simpler methods for arsenic compound determination, identifying arsenic species and mushroom species not investigated so far, and so on, said Professor Kai Chuantu, principal investigator of the study. And now to our third story. A psychedelic compound from magic mushrooms produced in yeast. Psilocybin mushrooms have been found to have had minimal harmful effects and could potentially benefit those with depression, but they remain illegal even though they offer groundbreaking alternatives to several undertreated psychological conditions. Nevertheless, psychedelics are currently riding a wave of positive momentum brought on by cannabis, and if psilocybin gets approved as a pharmaceutical drug, production in yeast appears to be the most commercially viable option. It's infeasible and way too expensive to extract psilocybin from magic mushrooms, and the best chemical synthesis methods require expensive and difficult to source starting substrates. Thus, there is a need to bring down the cost of production and provide a more consistent supply chain, says Nick Milne, former postdoc at DTU, DTU BioSustain and CSO, co-founder of Octane of Octarine Bio. Bio-based production of psilocybin has gained big interest and researchers have already proved small-scale production in E. coli. However, production in bacteria comes with a wide range of concerns which can be addressed by using yeast instead. In yeast, the scientists prove that psilocybin can be reproduced de novo, which means that you can produce the molecule by simply growing the yeast with sugar and other nutrients without the need to add any other starting substrates. Producing psilocybin de novo in E. coli is difficult since a key enzyme in the biosynthetic pathway doesn't work in bacteria, and so to get around this problem you need to add an expensive starting substrate, making the whole production process way too costly. Since yeast and psilocybin mushrooms are quite closely related species, this enzyme works very well in yeast, providing a much more cost-efficient alternative, says group leader at DTU Biosustain, Arena Boradina. Additionally, yeast also performs better in large-scale fermentation due to its long history in the beer brewing process and also in the purification process since E. coli produces additional potentially harmful compounds that you would not like to have in your final product. Alright, that one was from ScienceDaily.com And now for our last one, this mushroom suit digests your body after you die. With all the focus on how we can reduce our carbon footprint in our lifetime, most of us forget that we continue to have a significant impact on the environment long after we die, thanks to our toxin-riddled funeral industry. But a team of designers have come up with a more eco-friendly option, a jumpsuit woven from mushroom spore-infused thread called the Infinity Burial Suit. Also known as the Mushroom Death Suit, the idea is that the mushrooms will begin to grow from your body once you've been buried slowly digesting you while neutralizing any environmental contaminants you harbor, such as pesticides, heavy metals, or preservatives in the process. First announced to a whole lot of controversy five years ago, the suit will now officially go on sale as early as April this year, with the first test subject already locked in. The suit relies on the power of microremediation, which is the ability for mushrooms to clean up toxic contaminants in the environment. I was inspired by the idea that mushrooms are the master decomposers of the earth and thereby the interface organisms between life and death. Artist and creator of the suit, Ja Rim Lee, told Coexist. Lee and her company, Coeio, C-O-E-I-O, have now formed their first test subject, 63-year-old Dennis White, who is suffering from a terminal neurodegenerative disease called primary progressive aphasia and they already have a waiting list of customers in the hundreds lining up to try the suit, which is estimated to retail around $999. Due to popular demand, the team is also developing an infinity pod to help your pet's body return to nature, which they will expect to be ready released in early as next month. And you gotta remember this article from a few years ago, so it's probably already up. Coeio 
has been quiet on their Infinity Mushroom stream, but what they have revealed is that Lee chose a stream by feeding a group of mushrooms her skin, hair, and nails to narrow down the most efficient decomposers for the job. That all sounds a little creepy, and at the beginning being eaten by anything other than death doesn't sit well with a lot of people, but there's a real need for better burial options. Right now we have to cut down trees to make our caskets, which are often coated in chemicals so they'll last for centuries, taking up a whole lot of valuable land in the process. And before we even make it into our casket, our bodies are pumped full of toxic formaldehyde. Cremation may sound more natural, but it isn't much better with our bodies needing to be burnt to temperatures between 760 and 1150 degrees Celsius for 75 minutes. That's an incredibly energy intensive process and it also releases a significant amount of greenhouse gases and toxins into the environment. In the UK, for example, cremation is responsible for 16% of the country's mercury pollution. Thanks to your dental fillings. So your teeth are polluting the earth after you die and they get burned into a pile of ash. This isn't the only company trying to make death more eco-friendly. Earlier this year, two Italian designers created a burial pod that turns your body into a tree. And that is something that I actually looked into and am heavily debating on doing with myself. I was either thinking going with the tree or building my own casket after I form a relationship with some tree that's out there wild that I had to apologize for. But yep, that's a little bit here nor there. Um, let's get back to here. Uh, whichever option people choose, Lee hopes that the mushroom suit will help gradually change people's perspective on death. For every person who uses the infinity burial suit, there will be many more who witness the choice to return to the earth and to use one bodies in a beneficial way, she said. This will help create cultural shift towards a cultural acceptance of death and our personal responsibility for environmental sustainability. What are your thoughts on what we should do with our bodies after we die? Do you think that we should be put in a casket? Do you think we should be burned? Do you think we should be fed to the ocean? What do you think we should have happen to us? What's happening to you? Do you know? Like I said, I might be wanting to go into a tree or making my own casket. Most likely it'll be one of the two. Alright friends. Well, it's at this point in time. I'd like to thank you for your time. It's all we have. It doesn't exist. Much love and stay chugging.